but most people don't have any real friends. You know, in this technological age where it's normal to have a thousand people, a thousand friends on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever, we don't really know what is a real friend anymore. And it's hard to, hard to judge now what is even a real friend. And if you never learn how to make a real friend, then don't be surprised if nobody shows up to your funeral. So listen closely. I think we all have to go in there and just try to still have So let me tell you a story. So, you know, me, who's, you know, been doing self-development for a long time, for 10 plus years, had this YouTube channel for quite a few years and all that. I was wondering, well, you know, what kind of topics would people want to hear about? So I did a survey on my YouTube channel, like, hey, so I can talk about the, you know, the black pill in cell. That's some, what some people wanted that for some reason. Uh, the spiral dynamics, you know, the advanced concepts of ego development, whatever. And the most important, uh, the most notable result was that people wanted to learn how to make friends strange right like i think 40 to 50 percent of people who voted the survey just want to know how to make friends and i was surprised I, th I thought like you know maybe some people like me would be like more interested in like the deeper stuff like the meta stuff philosophical stuff no they just want to learn how to make friends i'm like okay that's kind of surprising but um but you know me in my own life to tell you a bit of my story me when i grew up um i was never the popular kid i was never sort of like the the super extroverted kid that everyone knew. Um, I sort of tried to be that in college for a certain time. I, uh, but really my whole life, I wasn't really like sort of that popular kid who had a lot of friends, but I had a few friends, right? It, let's say in elementary school and all that, all that, I had a handful of friends and those friends really, you know, I was very close to them. You know, my whole life, even now I have friends that are very close and I was, a lot of them, they told me that I was their best friend, right? Uh, I was their best friend. Who's your best friend? You know, that, that's kind of the question you ask when you're young, like, well, you're my best friend. And I was like, oh shit, really? I'm your best friend. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any best friends because all of my close friends are my best friends. Kind of strange how that works, right? Uh, kind of strange, but you can't really sort of, yeah, I don't like to call people my best friends because when I call someone my best friend, it's like, well, I'm saying to their face, right? You know, when I talk to someone and I say, hey, you know, by the way, my best friend, uh, whatever, uh, uh, Jason, whatever thing, uh, we had a blast the other day. Well, what's that saying to that other close friend is I'm basically saying to them, like, you're not my best friend. You're not my best friend. Like I have a friend that is better than you. So I don't like this concept of best friend. All of my close friends are my best friends, right? And uh, <laughs> and it's kind, of, it's kind of kind of a funny thing because that was sort of a natural thing for me to make close friends. It was always like a natural thing for me. Maybe because I'm an introvert and I like one-on-one -on -one conversation and deep conversation. That just kind of how my friendships friendships gravitate towards. So maybe that's why I have deeper friendships and better friendships than maybe most people. I don't know. I don't know. So let's dive right into it, shall we? So first, if you want to learn how to make friends, how to make close friends, real friends, uh, first you have to work on yourself first. Very important, you have to work on yourself and you know, make sure that you are, um, you know, you present your best self out there, right? Your authentic self out there and all that. But first of all, the first step is that you become more open-minded, right? Be open-minded, be uh, have all ears. What I like to say is listen to what the other person has to say and listen deeply to what they have to say and listen to the emotions they're trying to convey, the ideas that they're trying to convey and try to relate with that person. Just learn um, that basic listening skill, right? You know, you would, maybe you would think that, that you know, the best person at making friends, right? It's like that popular kid who's just extroverted and just blabs his mouth around and can just tell, tell stories endlessly. Uh, I don't agree, actually. I really don't agree. I believe that the best, the person who can make a close friendship is someone who, you know, can listen to the other person because it's only when you listen that you can connect, right? You connect with that person, you're fully present with that person and you're open-minded to whatever they have to say. It doesn't matter if it's crazy or out there you just listen to them and maybe in that craziness that they tell you you can find something to relate with and when you listen to that person you know try to relate their experience with your experience it doesn't matter if it's 
extremely far-fetched, right? Uh, you try to relate your experience with that other person. So let's say that person opens up to you and they tell you, oh, I've had this crazy thing happen to me um, in my business and this happened and that happened and that's bullshit. And maybe you never had a business. So you like, you can say something like, well, that's that's crazy. I mean, I've, I, of course, I'm not in your shoes. I've, you know, I've never opened a business, but I can really understand how that can be crazy. Actually, this other thing happened to me at my job where X, Y, Z, and you relate with them, right? So you have to make these links, right? Very simple. You just have to empathize with that person and, you know, share a bit of your story with them as well, right? The second basic thing you have to work on, uh, on yourself before you start making friends is that you have to know yourself well. Right, to know yourself well, because how can you relate to someone else if you don't even know yourself, right? Why would you spend time or how could you know someone else if you can't know yourself, right? You have to know yourself first. You have to know who you are, what kind of person you are, what kind of passions you have, what kind of destiny you want to live up to, uh, what kind of, you know, what kind of person you are, basically, what kind of person you like, uh, what kind of people you like, what kind of things you like or dislike, right? Because if you don't know that, what are you going to convey the other person? What are you going to talk about, right? If you don't know yourself, what are you going to talk about? You talk about the weather, you're going to talk about COVID, you're going to have small talk about the quarantine and how the grocery stores are closed. That's not a way you're going to connect to someone on a deep level, right? If you don't know yourself on a deep level, how can you connect to someone else on a deep level? Makes no sense, right? And I feel like this is one aspect of making friends that is often overlooked, right? Uh, I, I feel like most people, they believe like the how to make friends is that you have to just go out there and socialize and blab around and tell stories and try to be cool and impress the kids. That's not how you do it. First, you have to come from a place of knowing yourself, knowing who you are, knowing what you're about, and then you can convey that to others. Simple as that. And the third thing that I recommend, uh, third basic, uh, uh, before you go out there and make friends is to develop a high enough self-esteem, right? It doesn't have, you don't need high self-esteem to make friends. In fact, you know, I've made plenty of friends like as a, you know, in high school and uh, in elementary school, uh, even when, you know, I was very shy, even when I was very introverted, very um, closed off, right? I still made friends. You can still make friends even if you're lacking in certain areas, but it just helps if you believe that you can make a true friend, it does help. If you have this belief that you can go out there and possibly make a friend, then that's a good place to start from, right? If you don't have that handle, then it's gonna be very hard to go out there and make a real friend. Now, let's look at you making friends, like the whole process of making friends. And you know, before you get into making close friends, all right, we have to look at, are you even having, are you even making friends at all, right? So you have to look at sort of the way you meet people, sort of like a funnel, right? So it's like um, you start with uh, acquaintance, right? Not even, it starts with being a stranger, right? You meet strangers and those strangers become acquaintances. Those acquaintances, if you turn them into something more, they become friends, right? And those friends, they can turn into close friends. Right. So the first step is strangers, right? How many strangers are you meeting or are you sort of uh, encountering in your social circle? Maybe it doesn't have to be like a stranger on the street. It can be like a, a friend of a friend that you don't know. That's still a stranger to you, right? But they become an acquaintance by just you meeting them. Or I was going to say shaking hands, but you can't shake hands anymore. So waving at them, whatever. So this is how you, uh, you meet people. So look at your funnel, look at how many people are you meeting, right? Now, with, if it's online now or, you know, in person, whatever it is, how many people are you meeting, right? That is the first step, because if you're not meeting enough people, then it's going to be very, very hard for you to make friends, right? So how many people are you meeting, okay? And out of the me people that you are meeting, how, how many of them are you, like, seeing on a consistent basis, like, not seeing like uh, going out, uh, having fun necessarily, but like you, that you just see, maybe it's like a coworker at work. I don't know, a friend of a friend that sometimes you, you see at uh, the tennis court, whatever you're doing, okay? Um, so those things, you're gonna look at these things and you know, if you, if you aren't meeting enough people that way, then you know, you're gonna work on going to more events. So now let's say that you're meeting enough people. Okay, you got step number one handle, you go to events, whatever, you try to meet people and you know, 
you still don't have friends. Okay, well, look at the second uh, step, which is, well, are you turning these acquaintances into friends, right? If these acquaintances are not turning into friends, then you have to work on, you know, following up with them, which means that, you know, you, you hang out with them and you're like, hey, you know what, you seem kind of cool, let's go grab a drink, let's go, uh, let's go do some, let's go play a video game online, you know, we should, I've heard of this cool game, maybe we should play it together, or hey, how about uh, we do, you say you like hiking, let's go hiking uh, this weekend, and something like that, you, you, you set up an event with that person, and you follow up with them, so you got to work on your sort of following up skills, if you're not, making friends, right? And after you followed up with that, maybe you have friends now, right? When you reach a point where you have friends, but you don't have any friends you feel closely connected to, then listen to the steps in this video. Now, how this process works, making close friends, is that you have to understand that in this process, you will repel certain people, okay? And there's other people that you will really attract that will really click with you, and that's totally normal. Why? Because to make close friends, what you have to do is you have to take a risk. You have to take the risk of putting yourself out there, truly putting yourself out there, right? And when you do that, a lot of people are either going to love you or they're going to hate you. It's either one or both. And it's rare to find someone in between. And the people who are in between, they don't end up being close friends, which is fine. They can stay acquaintance, okay? They don't become your close friends, but that's, you know, that's totally fine, right? That's totally fine. So, you have to understand that, you know, if you were the type of person, maybe you're sort of a bit of a people pleaser, maybe you have a few friends and, you know, maybe you don't really feel like you belong to that group or that, you know, uh, none of those people are close to you. That's probably the number one problem is you are not being truthful to yourself. You are not putting yourself out there uh, truly enough, right? Um, for example, me, <laughs> for example, me, I can tell you a story that, um, you know, I, I used to go to, you know, sometimes I go to, uh, I used to go to house parties, you know, before that, that whole pandemic thing happened. And, uh, you know, I try, I just meet people. And at first when I go to these parties, I try not to, you know, offend anyone or whatever. And, but now I, but, but at a certain point I realized, you know what, why do I care? I want to put myself, my true self out there and I want people to relate with my true self. So I started, you know, talking about maybe stranger, weirder things. I talk about spiritual development or, uh, I don't know, psychological development, self-help. I talk about, you know, sometimes uh, weirder stuff, right? Uh, I crack an awkward joke that people like won't find, like half of the room will find disgusting or, or like shocking and the other, the, the other half will love it. Right, depends. So it's it's sort of this um, uh, process where you go, you put yourself out there, and you know people are gonna love it or hate it. So how do you turn your friends into close friends, or how do you turn uh, certain friends that you have into closer friends? Number one, very simple. Okay, openly talk about the things you're passionate about. Openly talk about the things that you like, the things that you dislike. Openly talk about the things that make you passionate, make you happy, right? Uh, you have to th talk about the things that are closest to your heart. Because for someone to connect to you, they need to feel what you love. They need to feel, you know, that connection to what you like, right? It's like, if you talk about what's close to your heart, you're putting your heart out there and they can either take it or leave it. And if they relate with you, then maybe they'll pour out, pour out their heart to you or whatever <laughs> in, a, in a metaphorical way. Maybe they'll you know, express that passion, similar passion to you back. And then there's a connection. And the stronger that sort of connection that happens, the stronger the friendship. So try to do something like that, right? So me, for example, me, how I met my closest friends right now is um, uh, the thing I was passionate about was uh, PUA, right? The pickup sort of... Uh, um, pick up things so sort of the pickup industry before uh, that was that was the thing i was passionate about a few years ago and that's how i met my friends some so those friends that are still my closest friends to this day and you know you would say this is something superficial you know just going out there and talk to girls but there was much more to it there was this self-esteem self-confidence development aspect to that community uh, also that i really liked and that we really connected to in that sort of um, you know that journey to become better as a man to become more attractive more um, you know more confident as a person that was the thing that you know really bonded us as people right 
And what happens when you talk about your passions is you meet people that are passionate about the same thing, right? Whatever you're passionate about, dude, like you can find someone who's passionate about the same thing or a similar thing, right? If you're passionate about gardening, there's plenty of people passionate about that and you can relate to them on this level, right? And not only that, but when you talk about these passions, right? And then when you have the same passion, then you can go on a outing, you can go on a journey together where you explore the same passion together. And then you have crazy adventures, uh, crazy times and, you know, uh, crazy memories. And those memories really solidify the friendship, right? The memories that you create with that person, right? Um, you know, the, the ups and downs and the journey that you go through, this really, really solidifies the friendship, right? So for example, uh, if you have a friend that's sort of into filmmaking and and you're in filmmaking, then, you know, you have the same passion and then maybe you start to do a project together and then you go to the ups and downs and the difficulties of doing the film together and, you know, maybe getting rejected from the film festival, be like, fuck it, you know, we're going to try it again or whatever you, you, know, you can sort of, you know, through these adventures, through these uh, memories that you create together creates a friendship, right? And that's something maybe to think about. So how do you do that pr practically in a conversation, right? It doesn't have to be already with your existing friends. I recommend you do that with every single person you meet uh, or that, you know, you get uh, past the small talk territory. You don't try to incorporate that. So, um, you know, me, for example, I, I was at, I like to give this example, um, a few, you know, before that whole pandemic stuff, I was at work, okay? And uh, we were having lunch with uh, some of my, um, some of my coworkers, and then the, you know you sort of talk about things, and sometimes during the lunch break, after the the topic is over, then there's sort of a silence. You don't know what to talk about, and then just one of my coworkers, she says, "Right, so what shall we talk about?" <laughs> because nothing was being talked about, and I said, "Well, we should talk about you know the meaning of life, and uh, you know what's the purpose of it all, and what we should do about it." And she said, ah, no, don't get, don't get me, don't start on that thing. Like, ah, oh, no, let's not talk about that, right? <laughs> Whatever. But this was me opening up already about my passions, what I'm passionate about, which is uh, philosophy, the way of looking at life, um, you know, sort of having a perspective on life. Contemplation, you're sort of opening up about my personality. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, me looking always at the deeper meaning at things. That's my personality. And I just put this out there. <laughs> so that's something uh, that you can do. And, you know, she rejected the, the idea that we talk about something like that, but that's fine. That just means she's not going to be my friend. She's not going to be a close friend, but that's totally fine. You know, we are still acquaintances and nothing against her. She's just not compatible as a friend with me. So I was like, okay, this, this person doesn't want to listen to me. Fine. But you at least opened up, right? So the second thing you got to do, right? If you want to make close friends, the second thing is you have to be vulnerable. Right, vulnerable as in you have to be vulnerable about your strengths, your weaknesses, especially your weaknesses, because, you know, it's easy to flaunt your strengths and flaunt what you're good at. You know, on social media, you only show the good side of you. Right. And I believe that the technological age now makes it much harder to open up about your vulnerabilities because you only show the highlight reel on Instagram, don't you? Right. You only show the highlight reel on Facebook. You're not going to show that, you know, you're only going to put the, the photos of like your graduation, you know, or your, you know, the, the ceremony you had or the trophy you won. You're not going to put photos of you like, you know, lonely at night because you don't have a girlfriend or you don't have any friends. Like crying yourself to sleep, you're going to put a photo of that. It makes no sense, right? So, I mean, but with people you're trying to be close with, those aspects of yourself have to open up. Right. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of something uh, funny that, uh, you know, uh, one of my uh, first clients, first few clients that I had, uh, you know, he was asking me, hey, so I want to connect more with people. What's what's what can I do? What's the technique? What's the tactic? And I was like, you know, he was an extremely logical person. So I understand his perspective, but like the sort of lack of uh, sort of, uh, I guess, if you want to go woo here, like lack of connection with his heart chakra or, you know, his heart, you know, he's just not connected to her, to his heart, to his emotions. And I was telling him, well, there's no tactic, dude. You just got to be yourself. You got to be vulnerable, put yourself out there. And, you know, I mean, 
Have you ever cried in front of someone, right? And cry in front of like a, a friend or a close friend. He said, oh, what? Like crying? How is that going to help me make friends? That makes no sense. But he was looking at it at the literal sense, right? That, that crying would be helping make friends. But the point being, it's not that it's crying that will make, make you connect with someone else. It's that the process of being vulnerable and opening up, that makes you friends. The process of being vulnerable, opening up about, you know, some of the things that, you know, maybe, um, you know, uh, made you angry or made you sad or made you, you know, certain, certain difficult things. Opening up about these things, you know, makes it uh, way better. It makes it more deeper of a, of a connection. Of course, this is time and place for it, right? You're not going to open up to some random stranger on the street. Uh, you know, you've, <laughs> we've all had that stupid, like, like the homeless person uh approach us say like hey i have terminal cancer i'm gonna die and my and my my fiance left me and um you know uh, and my children molested me i need five dollars please like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> it's like you know, of course there's a context to open up right and be vulnerable but if you see an opportunity jump in right and it's fine to open up a little bit first because sometimes the other person is not vulnerable, is not confident enough to, to open up, right? But me, I always try to practice opening up. Uh, even if it's not the perfect time, I open up just 1% and see if they sort of take the bait, right? So for example, um, you know, they asked me about, the, you know, the first step I tell you about, you know, talking about my passion. So I talk about, oh yeah, I have a YouTube channel. I help other people, you know, self-develop and overcome their quarter life crisis. Like, oh, nice. Um, and why did you start this channel? Da, da, da. Then sort of like, and then I maybe sometimes I tell my story. Well, I was never really confident and, you know, sort of lacking uh, skills in that aspect and, you know, even lacking confidence with uh, women and in dating in general. I had, you know, a lot of troubles with that. And I just opened up about that. And that's sometimes that, that not always, but sometimes it invites the other person like, oh, that's interesting. You know, I've always wondered how to be more like successful, um, you know, be more self-confident because I'm always very shy. Maybe sometimes they open up like that and then you relate on that level. Interesting, right? So you can combine all these things together. And the third tip that I have for you is to stop being perfect. Yeah. Stop being perfect. Stop trying to, you know, put yourself out there and be like sort of the perfect, most fun self, most uh, outgoing self or whatever, most entertaining self. Because, um, I mean, you know, some people, they believe that the way they're going to make the most friends is if they are the most impressive, if they have, they have the best resume or if they have the most friends and they're most popular, then people will want to meet you. Or if you're the coolest person who's done like the craziest uh, reverse keg drinking thing at the party, then every girl is going to fall in love with you and every guy's going to think you're the biggest boss, like just stupid, <laughs> uh, stupid stuff, whatever. That's absolutely not the case. People, they will fall in love not with your what makes you perfect or amazing. They will they'll fall in love also with your imperfections. People will love your imperfections because the imperfections is what makes you you, right? And, you know, stop being so serious. Right? Stop being so serious. Uh, you know, can you crack a joke or make a few mistakes or be clumsy and laugh about it, right? And, you know, often uh, how people relate and, you know, a lot of friends, like close friends, when they talk to each other, if you listen to what they're saying, you know, they're always cracking jokes or like they're talking about that, that, that time when, you know, that person, they spilled a drink on themselves and they farted and they, it made a lot of noise and everyone laughed. And, you know, all these imperfections is what makes a friendship more, um, it gives it more depth, right? Because we all know that, you know, someone who only shows their their perfect side we can't connect with that because nobody's perfect you, you can't connect with someone who's overly perfect because um nobody's perfect as simple as that and humans want to relate with other humans and being a human is a definition of imperfection by definition if you're human you're imperfect so uh, if someone presents themselves as, as perfect they don't really uh, they can't relate on an emotional level. So stop being perfect. Stop, like, stop being perfect and start putting yourself out there in imperfect ways. And another tip I have for you is actually be there for your friends. 
actually be there for them when they need it. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean to be a doormat, but actually spend time with them, quality time with them. Uh, because, you know, if you don't spend any time with these friends that you have or any quality time with these friends, then it's going to be very hard to, you know, deepen the friendship. So uh, try to have some one on one time with them, you know, maybe have like a more in-depth conversation with them. Right. Uh, try to have like a more quality time with these people, you know, share experience, share an experience with that person and go on experiences. And, you know, because time really solidifies friendship. If you don't have time, it's going to be very hard for the friendship to uh, to go to a deeper level because with time you build trust, with trust you build more connection. So as simple as that, be there with, for your friends. Uh, but you know, the trap here is you don't want to fall into becoming a doormat and you're know, doing favors for a friend you know, that they don't deserve, of course, because that's not going to bring you anywhere. You want to spend quality time with that person. So let's look into certain problems that some people have when it comes to meeting friends and making friends, right? So the first problem is that some people, they say, well, you know, I have friends and I'm always there for my friends. I'm always there to help them. And, you know, I always try to be the best friend that I can, but they never reciprocate back or they're never there for me, right? So it's sort of like a one way sort of friendship. And what I have to tell you is that uh, it's not, I believe that this problem comes from uh, you being a people pleaser. It comes from you not being able to, um, you know, it comes from you uh, not being real in a sense because a people pleaser uh, always wants the other person to be happy uh, um, in detriment of their own happiness. Right. And the people pleasers, the problem is that they want friendship so bad, like the people pleasers who want to make friends like they they want these friendships so bad that, you know, they don't actually have time for the friendship. They can't connect on a deeper level because they're just trying to please the other person instead of actually connecting with the other person. Right. So they're like, for example, they're trying to come across as cool. They try, they're too busy trying to come across as cool, perfect, you know, that they have their shit together that they don't have any time to connect with that person on a real level, right? So it's like, for example, just think of, let's say if you wanted to be friends with, let's say if you wanted to be friends with, I don't know, uh, Michael Jackson, or you wanted to be friends with, I don't know, uh, the president, Donald Trump, whatever. Like, if you came up to them, you're like, oh man, like, I'm such a fan of your work, like, you're amazing. Uh, you know, I've, I followed you on Twitter and I love what you were saying about it. I mean, it's that's not how you're going to connect with them because they're you know it's it's just not you're not looking at that other person as a human being uh you're looking at that other person as something to attain or something that you know, that's higher level than you or that you want to help right or whatever that is like you are not being you're not connecting with them on a human level you're connecting you're trying you're connecting with them as if there's some sort of superior object that exists that you know doesn't deserve uh, your attention or whatever that doesn't work so if you want to be friends with you know whoever you have a if you want to be friends with michael J uh, you know uh, michael jackson or whatever hey man uh, how's it going whatever and then you you maybe you 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 crack a few jokes and you tell him oh man that last single you made was was uh, was cool but yo you know what xyz and then you, you try to crack a joke you try to be friendly with him and you know sort of just sort of banter and you know be, be like a normal person that's how you make friends with someone so maybe that's the that's what the problem is right and and you know if you're always there for your friends but they're never never there for you you have to understand that making favors for other people that does not increase friendship no it doesn't Doing favors for other people, for your friends, doesn't really increase the friendships, right? Um, yes, it might help a little bit, but it's a, such a small fraction. Because, you know, what increases friendship is quality time spent together, fun time spent together, and, you know, time that you spend, uh, you know, um, having fun together and connecting. For example, me, I rarely ever ask my friends for favors, if not ever. And when they ask me favors, like, hey, can you do this for me? I, I pretty much 90% of the time I say, no, I can't. Why? Because, you know, that's sort of the boundary that I set in my friendships is that like, you know, I'm going to do it myself. 
I don't really need other people's help. Uh, sometimes I might need other people's help, uh, but you know, I, I do it myself and you know, I, I, you know, I don't give favors for, to anyone and I'm, I guess that's kind of selfish, but I don't expect favors from anyone else either. And you know, if I ask someone else, if they say no, that's fine too. So that's sort of the expectation that I set in my friendships, right? So if you are always there for your friends and not, they're not there for you, then just forget about doing favors for them. Just forget about being super nice to them. Try actually connecting with these people. Another problem that some people can have is that they say, well, I'm too shy to make friends. I'm too shy to go out there and you know make friends. What should I do? Or I, I don't even have a friend because I'm too shy. I'm too scared. What should I do? Well, bad news for you. You got to go out there and make friends. There's nothing else you can do, right? You struggle with making friends, you gotta go out there and make friends. Nothing else I can tell you. You have to go out there and make it happen. No other option. Another problem that some people might have is like, well, I'm introverted and you know, I, you know, I don't really like group gatherings uh, and all that, you know, how do I make a close friend and all that? Well, uh, it's actually, there's actually no problem for you actually because introverts, they're good at, you know, uh, maybe at having one-on-one -on -one conversations. They're better at relating with people on a one-on-one -on -one level. So in that sense, really all you have to do is, you know, find a few people you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you that you know, potentially could be a good friend and you talk to them. So in conclusion, there are really no clear ways, you know, there's no clear cutter ways on how to make friends. I mean, there's sort of a methodology or, you know, sort of uh, step by step that you can take. But at the end of the day, you're just going to go out there. You're going to open yourself up. You're going to be vulnerable. If you don't have the courage to do that, then work on your self-esteem. Ask yourself, well, why am I so afraid to open up? Why am I so afraid to talk about my passions? Because if you open these gates up, then you can make friends. You can make the best friends ever. So you just have got to do that. That's as simple as that, right? So if you like this video on how to make close friends, then you're going to love this next video here about how to deal with loneliness. So I'll see you on the other side. Peace. So if you need help to find who you are, find your passion, your purpose in life, so you can, so that can help you make more friends, then you can book a free consultation call with me, link in the description below. And if you like this video on how to make close friends, you're going to love this next video here on how to deal with loneliness. So I'll see you there. How to cure loneliness. You're not going to like this answer very much, but to cure loneliness, you have to stop fearing being alone. That's it. A lot of pickup artists, the reason why they're all in this successful women 